We just landed in Stansted Airport in the UK and we're here because we're meeting Bob Spence who has invented the bifocal display which we actually see in use here behind me. He'll tell all about it when we meet him in London. We are here at the Imperial College London where we're meeting Bob Spence. Bob Spence and Mark Apperley from the University of Waikato, New Zealand are the inventors of the bifocal display. So Bob, can you explain to us what is bifocal display? Well, the bifocal display is in fact very, very, very simple. Um, if you can imagine uh, an information space mm -hmm. uh, with uh, texts, uh, pictures, etc., that you're looking at, um, it's usually too big to see on a normal screen. So that you just see part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, people want to see context. They want to be aware of context. So it's very easy. You just take this uh, information space and you angle the sides so that you can see one or two items in focus, in detail, you can read text, but you're also aware of all the rest of the things in that space. Mm -hmm. So if there's a, a, a thin red rectangle just about here, I, I'm aware that that's from my boss, so it's important. So it's unreadable, because it's distorted, hence the use of the word distortion. Um, all I need to do is, is to, this doesn't work too well, but all I need to do is to scroll it so that I can read it in detail. Mm -hmm. that, that's essentially the bifocal display, simple. So what are the significant features of the bifocal display? Well, first of all, it gives one solution to the too much data, too small a screen. Mm -hmm. so lots and lots of data. You don't want to cut a little bit out because you are then not aware of all the rest of the data. So that's, that's one sort of application. The other application is when people are working on a document, usually they want to see where the document is among, say, a chapter or, or a book. So if they can easily see where they are, that, that, that's a great help, and that's where the bifocal is, is, is useful. Um, so it's basically just uh, stretching information space. Yeah. Okay, so where do we actually use this? Right, um, well, one example, um, let's suppose you're trying to get from uh, Stansted to London, as you endeavour to do today. <laughs> um, wouldn't it be nice if you could have on your PDA um, a map which you could stretch at the appropriate point. So you come into Stansted Airport, what you want to know is exactly how you get to the station. Mm -hmm. So you want detail there. Once you're on the train, you don't want detail at all, because you know you're going to end up at Liverpool Street. Liverpool Street, you want more detail so you can get down to the underground, mm -hmm. etc. So, uh, if you can imagine a map with Stansted up here and Liverpool Street down here, that you could stretch at certain points where you want more detail. That's that, in essence, is what the bifocal display uh, is is doing. It's it's distorting information space. Yeah. So you use it on maps, but also on screen? Yes, yeah, there's, there's a, a, a it, it's difficult to say when you would use the bifocal display. You've got to look at a particular application. Uh, it may be sufficient to just stretch the thing as, as I did there. Mm -hmm. um, you may want to stretch it uh, in many different ways, uh, like, like the map from Stansted to Liverpool Street. Yeah. I never go that way myself. <laughs> uh, 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 maps, uh, it's an obvious application. Mm -hmm. On screen, uh, let's say one of the first things we uh, invented as an application was a calendar. Okay, so uh, I want to make an entry for next week. I'm not bothered about August and September, October, or where are we now? June, May, and April. So mm -hmm. let's squash those parts of the calendar 
and let me just see July and then take July and just stretch this week. Okay, so I've still got all the context there. And I can make my entry. Why do I need context? Because if I'm catching a, a 7 a.m. plane from Heathrow, I certainly don't want to go clubbing the previous evening. Mm -hmm. well, I should anyway. <laughs> Okay, so that's my, an example of where you want context. Yes. And anybody who's got a Mac, then they're very familiar with that uh, dock of icons, which when you move your cursor, they all sort of expand and contract. Again, um, it's the stretching principle. So what has happened since, since 1980 with the bifocal display? There was another idea that came up about six years later. Yes, 1986. It was called degree of interest. Very simply, if you've got a lot of data, then you say, am I interested in all that data? So if not, let me assign a degree of interest to each of those items and then filter out those which are not of interest. So that, to me, is a method of representing data. The bifocal or distortion is a way of presenting data. And I make that distinction very clear. In fact, my book is based on that. So first of all, you take your data and you decide how to represent it. Then you take that represented data and you lay it out or present it. The bifocal display is the laying out or presentation. The representation by uh, suppressing stuff that's of little interest is the representation part. Now those two things got combined, let's say, and gave rise to the expression, the fisheye display. Because if you've got uh, a map on a rubber sheet and you do that with it, put, you know, put a golf or, uh, football behind it, it looks, and I'm quoting, uh, like a fish eye. Now I've got topical fish at home and my fish don't have eyes that look anything like that, but I'm there quite happy. Mm -hmm. But that's the name that got associated with the bifocal, the degree of interest, those sorts of ideas. Well, that's, that's quite fun. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if you want to know more about the using the bifocal display, you can read uh, Bob Spence and Mark Apple's chapter on the bifocal display at interactionindesign.org. And you can also find more videos like this and chapters written by other inventors and thought leaders at Interaction Design. Thanks for watching.